This is M1 Combat Corner, the show that brings you the news and analysis about the fights you saw and want to see. In this episode, we're gonna talk about some great fights coming from the UFC, and also some entertaining and great boxing matches and analysis on what's gonna happen in opinion. Currently, combat sports is the sport that keeps on giving. Unlike generations past, from novelty fights to actual main events, they're giving us the fights we want to see. From now, till July, it's no different. The first fight I want to talk about is the highly anticipated fight between Jake Paul and Iron Mike Tyson. This fight sanctioned for eight, two-minute rounds, and should be very entertaining. It will be on July 20th in AT&T Stadium, Dallas in front of about 70,000 plus people. It will also show on Netflix. The co-main event is also a banger of a fight, but let's deal with the main event first. This is the tale of the tape for the fight between Jake and Mike Tyson. The only true advantage Jake Paul has that he is less than half Mike Tyson's age, this might give him an advantage on endurance and speed. With that being said, as you can see by their records, what they are as fighters are night and day. Jake Paul is currently 9 and 1 with 6 KOs, which is a decent record for an amateur, except most everyone he has beaten aren't boxers. 7 out of the 10 fighters were YouTubers, MMA fighters, and even basketball players that were smaller than him. Poor Nate Robinson, he didn't stand a chance. He impressively knocked out Tyron Woodley, but Anderson Silva gave him problems rattling him a little. Jake also surprisingly stood tall against Nate Diaz, who's an MMA fighter but is very famous for his stand-up. None of these fighters are at the caliber of someone who's considered one of the greatest of all time. At this point, Mike Tyson has probably forgotten more than Jake Paul knows. At his retirement, Iron Mike was 50 wins 6 losses and 2 draws, winning almost 90% by knockout 44, and the people he has beaten are a who's who in the annals of boxing, names like James Tony and Larry Holmes, George Foreman and other current and future boxing hall of famers. Here's the rub to this fight, Mike Tyson is 58 years old, so some fans speculate how much does Mike really have in the tank to fight someone more than half his age. Although he has put out workout videos and he looks like he has average speed for normal fighters, almost above average for his age, considering he is 58. They also say the last thing fighters lose is their power, and you can see in some of his videos he still has a lot of pop. What does each have to do to win? In order for Jake Paul to come out the winner in this fight, he has to use his youth and agility to his advantage. He has to stay away from power shots or at least to many of them. He also can go in there with hubris, in other words, he can't go into the ring thinking he has the fight won because he is younger and faster than Mike, or he feels he hits hard enough to mix it up with Mike because it will be a short night. For Mike Tyson, he has to remember his training and what made him one of the most feared heavyweights of all time. However, because of the advantages that Jake Paul has, if Mike goes in there feeling like, I'm iron, Mike, I have it in the bag, he will be embarrassed. What should the fans expect? People should see this fight for the entertainment level, not a classic Iron Mike fight. They both are getting paid handsomely so they know what it is. For those that say this will affect Mike's legacy, he is still the youngest heavyweight champion of all time, a boxing hall of famer, and considered one of the pound for pound greatest of all time and he will be laughing all the way to the bank. Even the great Canelo Alvarez said on first take, this fight is for entertainment. It's for money. It should be seen as that. But for those who came to really see a fight, the co-main event is what you want to see. Serrano vs Taylor 2. The first time these women fought was to a sold-out Madison Square Garden and they did not disappoint they ended up winning fight of the year and Kate Taylor came really close to losing that fight narrowly winning a split decision. Now, a few years removed, everyone is expecting the leather to fly in this fight. Where two of the top four pound for pound best female fighters doing it are gonna do it in, Dallas. I couldn't think of a bigger or better venue for these two lady warriors to put on a show. I'm sure they're going to show that women's boxing is just as box office and must see as the men. They both grew as fighters since their first fight, which is scary because they're two of the top four pound for pound best female active fighters. But if the first fight is any indication of what's gonna happen, Ananda Serrano has to do one of two things. Either put the pressure on and try the pressure on and get Miz. Taylor is out of there early. To me, in the first fight, it seemed that Serrano hits harder than Taylor. Or to pace herself and wait for openings to put on the pressure, Serrano needs to work on endurance and pace. She can't be a volume puncher with a limited tank. Kate Taylor was given the fight cause around the seventh round. Amanda was running out of gas and let Kate Taylor back in the fight. Amanda won six out of the first seven rounds, but Kate Taylor won four out of the last five. At the end of the 12th, Serrano almost knocked Taylor down or out. 
Taylor was worse for wear, but she did enough to have two of the judges feel she won, which made it split decision win. See you next time on Combat Corner, when I will bring you some opinions on the Canelo fight. Laters.